Hello YouTube. <clears throat> in this video I'm going to be explaining a little more in depth how I installed a GPU and power connector in my Dell PowerEdge R810. And I also attempted to install it in an R710, but I'll explain a little bit more as to why I wasn't able to do that. Um, long story short, the 810 has a power distribution board that hooks up to the uh, power supplies, whereas the 710 does not. They plug directly into the motherboard. And the backside of the motherboard is shielded by a metal plate, and you'd have to take out all the, looks like a Torx bit, and all the studs, and honestly, I don't have the tools or the motivation to try that. Um, on top of that, you'd also have to figure out how to run the wires through there. There's virtually no gap. Um, certainly not thick enough for what would have to stick under there. So, for now, this one's on the back burner. I will try. I will try to get a GPU installed in the 710. That being said, though, I was able to cut the slot. Let me take it over to the light. I was able to do a very poor job cutting the slot, um, and that actually worked to power this Fire Pro card, a V5800. A little old, but still works, so whatever. Uh, it's got dual CPUs, it's running the latest BIOS, it's dual 5660s, I want to say, 8 gigs RAM, nothing too impressive. Anyways, on to the A10. So first things first, you obviously need to remove the lid. In case you're wondering, by the way, that's actually printed on there, not a sticker. My buddy out here has a print shop. And uh, I asked him for a favor. Now, if you haven't seen my other video, the back of my case is actually broken. Um, I plan on fixing that eventually. That will not, however, affect you installing a graphics card. Um, oh, okay. Give me a second to get all this stuff pulled out. Let me pull out the fan chassis. Okay. Let me slide the GPU out of the way. Alright, so that gives you a better idea of how I ran the wires. Basically, you just want to take and unplug all the connectors that go to the power board. I had an easier time unplugging the one that goes to the motherboard as opposed to this one. It doesn't really matter which one you unplug. Um, remember to slide out both power supplies a little bit when you do this. Damn it. There we go. This one did have 1100 watt power supplies. Um, I don't know if there's a lower amper or a current rating than that. But once those are slid out, once you unplug that wire, unsnap this. It goes in little clips that are hard to see right here. You just pull that tab and uh, pull up. Right? Hmm. Wait. <laughs> been a few weeks since I did this. I could swear you just pulled that tab and then lifted. Yeah, that is how it comes out. Alright, so you pull that tab. This is awfully difficult one-handed. To all those that feel the need to comment on it, I know that my... Oh, I'm retarded. I almost broke that. Okay, so before you continue at this point, you actually need to slide the motherboard forward using these two handles. I totally, totally forgot about that. They open up like that, which slides the motherboard forward enough to pull out the power board that, gosh, I hope I didn't break. If I did, whatever, the 12 bucks on eBay, but still. And this, this is how the GPU is powered orient that so the top of this goes pointing towards the top basically um, as you can see on this side 
there are six large pins and then a bunch of data connectors in the middle. The six large ones are the ones that we're interested in. Those are the ones that uh, deliver the positive and negative 12 volts to the motherboard. So on the back side of those, you just solder on. The positive side goes on the right there. The negative side goes on the left. Um, make sure you don't go too far. The nice thing is you can see the trace on this side. And if you flip the board over underneath the black protective plastic, there's nothing. Okay. Well, anyways, if you hold it, so you can go one, two, three. So the third pair in of pins is as far over as you can go. But I just did the uh, first four pairs just to be on the safe side. I uh, soldered the ground wire, all the ground wires, for the 8-pin connector right there. And I soldered all the 12-volt positive wires right in the middle on this side where there's a nice big fat trace so that you can see where those connectors come through. That nice white circuit board trace there. And that just plugs into the graphics card. And then uh, when you install it in the server, you have to fish it underneath the metal here to keep it up out of the way. Be careful not to damage the wires when you're doing this. Then you can slide the board in place to install it. This thing hates me. Now, I'd just like to say I'm not responsible if you try this and burn your house down or it zaps your dog or whatever. This is extremely, extremely risky. This is obviously not supported by Dell and was never, ever, ever intended on these servers. But it does work. I've been using it for several weeks now. It actually performs very, very, very well. Better than any gaming desktop I've ever owned. Um, the CPUs I'm running are dual E7 4870s, the 10 cores. And the reason I'm only running two of them is because I'm running Windows 10 on this box, and Windows 10 only supports two physical sockets. If you run Windows Server 2008, you can support four sockets if you have the right version of it. Um, newer versions of Windows, it's my understanding that you have to buy the extra cores, basically, for Windows to support it, which, in my opinion, is extremely stupid, but whatever. Oh, I'm sure they have their reasons. Okay, so now that that's all installed, don't forget to slide your motherboard back in place. I just gently pinch the two connectors back together until the arms reach. And you just close those until they click. And then engages the power connector to the motherboard. Slide your power supplies back in, obviously. Don't forget to plug in the low voltage power connector and the power supply controls and whatever else goes over that. I don't know. I haven't done a whole lot of probing there. There might be a couple 5 volt lines and stuff, which could be useful if you ever needed to put a Molex on there for a USB 3.0 card or something. And you plug your card into the slot, which hopefully your server's not as broken as mine and you have the uh, little plastic thing that holds them in place. This thing. <laughs> Alrighty. Where did I have all these stuffed? I just took the uh, wires, I believe, and just stuffed them underneath the graphics card. Be careful not to block that heat sink under there. If you put the wires in front of it, it might still get airflow, but over time, I would fear that the uh, <clears throat> wires would become covered in dust and may block airflow to it. All right, install my sound card, flip down the retainer. Right up with the fans. And uh, that's how I installed it. Super sketchy. Uh, I definitely recommend not doing that. But <laughs> if you got your server for virtually nothing like I did and 
you just don't care, then uh, go for it. This thing has 64 gigs of RAM, 1066. Um, and as you can see in the other video, and I'll make some more of how it games, but it actually plays Battlefield 4 very, very, very well. The graphics card is an RX 480. It's not overclocked or anything like that. I never felt the need to. It does have the XFX hard swap fans. Um, I've actually been tempted to try running it without these since the server pushes a bunch of air in the backside there. And in theory, it may push the heat out of it over those fins, but I haven't experimented with that yet, and I just left the fans in there. Uh, that's all the questions I can think of to answer. If you guys have some more, post them in the comments, and uh, I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching.